Good morning everyone, my name is Ahmed Mustafa and I am a PhD student working at the Center for Energy and Geoprocessing at the Georgia Institute of Technology. The title of my presentation is Joint Learning for Seismic Inversion, an Acoustic Impedance Estimation Case Study. Without further delay, let me begin my presentation. Seismic inversion refers to the process of estimating reservoir physical parameters, for example, acoustic impedance, from seismic data. Given a seismic trace as shown in the figure, we can invert it to obtain the corresponding physical property trace of the rocks. Inversion is usually performed on complete seismic sections or volumes. Given a seismic volume, one can perform inversion trace by trace to obtain the corresponding rock property volume. Seismic inversion plays an important role in seismic interpretation, while the positions of major reflectors can generally be picked out in migrated post-tax seismic sections, it is hard to identify the layer lithologies without knowing the rock properties in those regions. On the other hand, acoustic impedance being a reservoir parameter can be related more easily to the rock property measurements obtained through well logging. It allows the delineation of major geologic changes in the subsurface since rocks of a similar type would have similar rock property values. Detailed analysis of the inverted parameters enables the identification of the different types of rocks making up the subsurface. The resultant building of more accurate models helps with oil and gas exploration and production purposes. Inversion may either be done in a deterministic fashion, also called model-based inversion, or it may be learned in a supervised fashion from training samples in what is called learning-based inversion. Model-based inversion begins with a smooth model of the subsurface physical rock parameters. It is then forward modeled to produce a synthetic seismic. The error between the synthetic seismic and the observed or actual seismic is computed. This error is then used to update the initial model's parameters. At the next iteration, the updated model produces a synthetic seismic that is hopefully closer to the observed seismic. This process is repeated many times until the synthetic and the observed seismic data match to an acceptable degree, which is hopefully also the point when the initial model converges to the true subsurface model. This is summed up in the following optimization problem, where the L2 norm squared of the difference between synthetic seismic and the observed seismic is minimized over the space of model parameters M to find the optimal model M sub hat. In contrast, learning-based inversion works by extracting the well traces and the corresponding seismic traces at all well positions in the seismic survey. The seismic traces form the features, while the well logs form the labels for the learning algorithm. The collection of all such seismic well log pairs constitutes our training dataset. The dataset is then used to train the machine learning algorithm by minimizing a loss function of the training dataset and the machine learning model's parameters theta over several training epochs. Once trained, we proceed to the next step of model inference where the trained model is used to estimate a well log trace for each seismic trace in the section, resulting in a rock property section. Learning-based seismic inversion suffers the problem of overfitting because of the limited availability of well log data. This is a direct consequence of the fact that wells are expensive to drill. A single well may cost up to millions of dollars to drill. Machine learning models commonly trained for inversion tasks may contain thousands to hundreds of thousands of free parameters. Over parameterized machine learning models trained on seismic surveys with limited well data memorize the training set while doing poorly on unseen test samples. The problem of limited well data may be circumvented by utilizing well data from other surveys in a machine learning paradigm called transfer learning. Depending on how close the source data set is and how efficient the transfer learning mechanism, in some cases, this may lead to a higher generalization performance on unseen test samples in the target data set. Pre-training and fine-tuning is a form of transfer learning very common with deep learning based computer vision applications like image classification, object detection, image segmentation, etc. 
It is based on the premise that deep learning architectures for image-based tasks share common image representations in the earlier layers regardless of the task being learned. Learning good features requires training deep networks on large, well-distributed datasets. ImageNet is a large image database for image classification consisting of over 14 million annotated images. It contains over 20,000 object categories with each category containing several hundred training samples. For vision-based applications other than object classification, say object detection, it is common to first pre-train the deep learning architecture on ImageNet for image classification. Then keeping the earlier layers fixed, the architecture is fine-tuned on the target task with a usually much smaller data set. It is commonly observed that using pre-trained architectures in this way usually leads to a faster convergence and higher generalization performance on the target task. There are a couple of caveats that one needs to keep in mind while using this strategy to transfer inductive bias into the target task from the related source task. Firstly, the matter of how many layers in the architecture should one keep fixed, how many epochs should one pre-train for, the pre-training and fine-tuning learning rates, and if more layers should be appended to the network architecture before fine-tuning is highly subjective and domain-dependent. It may require either many trial and errors and or subjective matter expertise to determine the optimal number of fixed pre-trained layers. Secondly, how well we generalize on the target task is highly dependent on how related the two datasets are. In case the two are very different, transferring inductive bias from the source to the target may actually worsen the generalization performance on the latter. So how may one get around the two problems with pre-training and fine-tuning based transfer learning methodology just described? Going back to our specific example of learning-based seismic inversion, we have a seismic dataset label A that consists of the seismic volume and corresponding bell logs. On the right, we have a plot showing a highly simplified version of the loss surface plotted on the weight space of the network, in this case, just two weight parameters, theta1 and theta2. The various shades of gray denote how the loss function is in those regions. By training our network A in a supervised fashion on the given data set, let us assume that we obtain the solution as shown in the plot. Now, it is very likely that this solution is a local minimum for training samples in data set A. Now, let's assume that we have another second data set of seismic volume and corresponding well log data labeled B. Training a different network with the same architecture as A on this data set leads us to a local minimum of solutions for training set B as shown in the weight plot. We propose a transfer learning scheme where we jointly train the two networks on their respective data sets, but with a loss term that penalizes the dissimilarity in weights between the two networks. The L2 norm squared between weight vectors of network A and network B is obtained and summed over all layers in the network architecture. By placing this soft constraint over the networks to be like each other while they are learning on their respective datasets, we have a scenario where the two networks are incentivized to find a region of solutions where they can generalize better to training samples immediately outside of the training data each network is training on. This is shown in the weight plot. This achieves three benefits. Firstly, one doesn't have to set the pre-training epochs, the pre-training learning rate, and other pre-training hyperparameters as in the pre-training and fine-tuning case. Instead, the network can dynamically learn to use only the information that would be useful to its specific task in the other data set. Secondly, pre-training and fine-tuning is a one-way scheme where only one of the tasks benefits from the other task called the source task. But in our proposed scheme, both networks and tasks simultaneously learn from each other to improve the generalization performance on their specific tasks. This is especially useful for the application of seismic inversion, where even the source data set is only likely to contain a limited number of wells, unlike the case with ImageNet that has millions of labeled training samples. 
Thirdly, the soft constraint ensures that even in the worst case where the two data sets are very different, the networks can always fall back to the case where they learned only from their respective data set and there is no negative inductive transfer of knowledge happening. We demonstrate our method of 2D spatial context-based seismic inversion on the open source SIEM seismic data set and the accompanying acoustic impedance model. The seismic data was obtained through reverse time migration and as such contains migration and imaging artifacts that may be found in a real-world seismic survey. As shown by the arrows, we uniformly sample a total of 14 training samples over the complete length of the section. This gives us a well approximately every 2 kilometers in the acoustic impedance model, which is less than 3% of the total training data available to us. Each training sample consists of a seismic feature vector denoted by x sub i and the corresponding label y sub i. The feature vector is a seismic image 7 samples wide and the full depth of the section, which is 751 samples, centered at the well position. The label is of course the acoustic impedance log that is centered at this seismic image feature vector. The collection of all such seismic image well log pairs constitutes our training data set. The second data set we use is the industry standard Marmousi data set. The model is accompanied by synthetic seismic data that has been obtained by convolutional forward modeling the acoustic impedance of the model with a seismic wavelet. Considering that this is an easier data set, we make this our source data set in the study and sample 51 wells from this survey as shown in the figure. In this slide, we describe the architecture of our network. The seismic image in each training sample x sub i is presented as input to the network. The feature extraction module consists of a series of 2D convolutional layers that processes this image via a set of 2D kernels. Over successive layers, we keep the kernel width fixed but increase the height via dilation. This allows us to model the input image as a sequence, just like a 1D CNN or RNN would do, but also inject the spatial context into the network estimations of well-log properties. In every forward pass, the output activations of the feature extraction module are fed simultaneously into a regression module to produce the estimated well-log trace, y hat sub i, and a reconstruction module to produce the reconstructed input seismic image, x hat sub i. Both of reconstruction module and reconstruction module also consist of blocks of 2D convolutional layers, but they are shallower than the feature extraction module. Now, reconstructing the seismic image is not a task that we are interested in, but we use it as an auxiliary task that the network learns alongside the primary task of impedance log estimation. This setup is called multitask learning, and it has been shown that learning related tasks simultaneously can help to improve the generalization on all tasks, since related tasks can share beneficial mutual information with each other. We set up identical copies of the architecture just described for both Marmousi and SIEM datasets. At each iteration, each copy produces estimations for the well log and reconstructed seismic input for its respective data set. The loss between estimated and ground truth well logs for both SIEM and Marmousi are summed over all training samples and added to each other to form the regression loss. In a similar fashion, the loss between all reconstructed and ground truth seismic inputs is summed over all training samples in both datasets to obtain the reconstruction loss. Finally, the weight mismatch loss, as described earlier, is obtained as the L2 norm scare difference of the weights in all corresponding network layers for both SIEM and Marmousi and is called the weight mismatch loss. In a last step, the three losses are added together, weighted by factors alpha, beta, and gamma, respectively, to obtain the total loss, which is then backpropagated to change the network weights so that the network produces a lower total loss at the next iteration. We train our network for 900 epochs using the popular deep learning library PyTorch. At this point, we would also like to comment on the significance of the weight factor gamma. Choosing gamma to be too high a value results in both networks learning identical weights. 
This is similar to the case of creating a single network copy for a data set consisting of the sum of Marmousi and Seam training samples. On the other hand, choosing gamma to be too low results in the case where each network is virtually independent of the other, which is also the case of no transfer learning. But at an appropriate intermediate value, we have the case where each network optimizes on its respective data set while also learning useful, beneficial information from the other one. After training the networks in the setup just described, we perform inference for each network on its respective data set's seismic section, resulting in a complete acoustic impedance profile. The acoustic impedance section for SEAM is shown in this slide since we took that to be our target data set. One may observe that the predicted section captures almost all of the major transitions and boundaries in the ground truth model, despite using only 14 wells, which is less than 3% of the total training data available. I would like to draw your attention towards the top left of the predicted profile, where very fine details on high frequency changes in acoustic impedance have been captured. Next. We move on to the high impedance arch in the bottom left of the complete model where the top and bottom of the structure have been delineated to a reasonable accuracy. Moving on, we observe the top of the salt structure in the middle where it can be seen how the grooves at the top have been very accurately captured. After that, we move to the transition boundary in the top left portion of the profile where we observe that it has been captured very sharply by our estimated profile. I would like to make one last comment about why the estimations are noisier in the bottom right than elsewhere. The seismic data in this region is very noisy as observed in the seismic section earlier. It is very hard for our model to make accurate estimations in this region. Despite that, one can observe that it was able to delineate with reasonable accuracy the bottom boundary of the high impedance arch in this region. Here we look in more detail at the trace plots produced by the estimated profile as they compare to the ground truth profile. We pick positions of x equals to 1346 meters, 12115 meters, and 30961 meters, which are all positions not in the training set. We observe how the estimated traces follow the long-term trends in ground truth acoustic impedance very closely for the most part. In areas towards the top, we also observe places where the estimated trace captures the high frequency variations in acoustic impedance. Finally, we calculate the R scare coefficient of determination averaged over all traces in the estimated acoustic impedance profile and the ground truth model, obtaining high values of 0.9041 for SEAM and 0.9701 for Marmousi, respectively. To show that our scheme leads to a greater generalization compared to the case if each network was trained in isolation on its respective data set, we also run individual training sessions on individual data set. The average R scare coefficient is compared to our proposed scheme. As can be seen, for both Marmousi and SEAM, we obtain higher generalization performance training on the two data sets together than individually. This proves our earlier hypothesis that the soft weight similarity constraint is helping the two networks generalize better on their individual tasks than if they were being learned alone. We would also like to remind the audience at this point that how effective the scheme is at increasing generalization on the individual tasks is largely influenced by how close the two data sets are. In our case, we have Marmousi that has a seismic data obtained through reverse time migration with all the artifacts accompanied by it, while Marmousi's seismic is very clean and noise-free and has been obtained through convolutional forward modeling on the impedance model. Despite the fact that there is very little in common between the two, we are still able to obtain an improvement on both data sets through our proposed scheme. It stands to reason that this improvement would be higher in case there was a greater level of similarity between the two datasets. To conclude, we summarize our major hypotheses and contributions in this work. 
Learning based seismic inversion suffers the problem of overfitting because of the limited availability of well log data. This is a direct consequence of the fact that wells are expensive to drill. Overparameterized machine learning models trained on seismic surveys with limited well data memorize the training set while doing, doing poorly on unseen test samples. The problem of limited well data may be circumvented by utilizing well data via a common transfer learning scheme based on pre-training a network on a large source data set before fine-tuning it on a smaller target data set. The problem with this scheme is that one has to decide the optimal pre-training settings using either expert knowledge or trial and error. We present a transfer learning scheme based on joint learning of tasks in a supervised fashion with a soft weight similarity constraint where the networks dynamically learn the most useful information from other data sets to increase generalization performance on their own data set. We test our proposed methodology for seismic impedance inversion on SIEM and Marmousi data sets. Our proposed methodology is able to make high quality estimations for the complete impedance profile for SIEM despite the noisy nature of its seismic data. We also show that we obtain higher generalization performance on both datasets compared to the case where each dataset is trained on its respective training samples alone without the weight similarity constraint. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the guidance and mentorship of my advisor, Professor Hassan Al-Rajib, that allowed me to complete this work at the Center for Energy and Geoprocessing at the Georgia Institute of Technology. I would also like to thank all my group members for their constant support and availability. For access to our codes and a complete list of our publications, please refer to the QR codes below. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I thank you all for your time and patience.